Hey guys, Kev here, and I want to do my first impressions, and I think I'll do a disassembly on the Finch Knife Co. Cherry Bomb here. You can see the action is pretty damn good already. Um, <clears throat> uh, Finch sent this knife to me uh, for free, so this is mine, and they sent it to me, so just keep that in mind. My own money is not at stake here. Uh, I try to be very objective regardless um but you have to keep that in mind that i didn't spend my 130 dollars or whatever it was on this okay um with that said i am really liking this knife um the devil's finger that came out before this was a sweet knife it's a good knife it really is but this just hits the mark for me um so if you were sitting out there trying to decide you know i got 150 bucks to spend i want to pick up a finch and i'm not sure which one of the new models i want um i would for sure point you in the direction of the cherry bomb even though i'm left-handed and the devil's finger has a reversible clip uh it has a little more blade length i'd say i'll pull it out in a second um and it's my card. Uh, so, like, it would depend on what you're doing. If you're trying to use it for, like, to work with or outdoorsy type stuff, like on your hikes and stuff, I would go with the Devil's Finger. Um, but if you're just looking for a knife, and let's say, let's put it this way. If you're a big fan of the Tycoona and the Runtley, I think you'll love the Devil's Finger. If you're like me and you're more of a fan of the 1929 and the Holiday, you're going to love the Cherry Bomb. And that's kind of how, you know, I look at it. Let's get all of them out, and uh, I'll show you the finch's nest, and we can go from there. Yeah. Gonna do the old reach around here. Ooh, sorry, I got all my knives over in a case over there. All right, so let's start from the beginning. You have the Rutley, the one that started it all. Such a cool knife, right? So compare that in size. Rutley's still the smallest one. Well, I gotta check the 929 but it's one of the smallest ones they've done the cherry bomb is still a little bit bigger is it too much light hold on let's try that that might be a little better um then you have the tacuna the mini machete um i think out of the what is it six now i give this one the least amount of love like carry time and everything i do really like it um I don't know why, it's just, maybe it's all that belly, but it is one of the cooler looking ones, in my opinion. Um, but it gets less pocket time than than the others. So there's your uh, Tycoona comparison. So if you have a Finch, we're going to we're gonna stack them all up here for you to see. Um, these are also in order of how they came out, other than, obviously, the, um, the Cherry Bomb that came out last. Next up, we have... The 1929, uh, this is, oh man, it's so hard between this and the holiday to say which one's my favorite. Um, I still think I prefer those two over this Cherry Bomb so far, but we'll see how that grows on me. This is going to be a great comparison. So, there you go. Um, it is a bit smaller, actually. I thought it was going to be pretty close. So, you'll see the Runtley is the smallest one, then the 1929, then the cherry bomb okay here is the holiday this is probably my favorite um of the finch knives just look at that action it's such a buttery action and this flipper tab like it just it it, it doesn't have a weak detent yet it takes nothing to pop it out of there it's just because it's such a light blade has good length on it and the detent is just dialed to perfection um so here's that comparison and these are the three man right here these are the kings of the court, the kings of the nest, so to speak. And they're very similar. You can see the uh, comparisons, right? They have the steel frame lock construction. They have like an inlay, onlay type deal. They have a hand rubbed uh, satin blade. Um, they have an excellent flipper. The pivot is the same on all of them. Maybe if I block the light, you can see. Uh, I got to work on that. But, you know, the action is incredible. I mean, look at this drop. That lock bar has no pressure. It's just whoop, right out of the way. Excellent action. Just butter. I absolutely love them. And then we have these two. 
The Cimarron, which has the best action out of all of them, literally just drops shut. If I got my finger out of there, it would. You know, I'm not even, like, doing anything. Look at that. Incredible. So that one came after the holiday. Right there. I love the Cimarron. That's your kind of budget finch. I mean, it's only $90. It's in 14C28N, which I actually might prefer over 154. So um, there's that. And then here's the Devil's Finger, which is a good comparison because um, it has the same blade shape, right? And these came out back to back, which is interesting. They have a very similar overall look, except for the back of this handle. Obviously, the construction with micarta instead of that steel frame lock but this blade shape is very very similar um, but of course you're going to get a little more grip and a little more reach with the devil's finger um, I do really like it I just think the action on this isn't comparable to the steel frame lock ones and I don't like the the liner lock very much it's just a little bit mushy for me personally a lot of people love it so um that's all the finch knives, guys. So if you want to look at them again, we can put them all out in no particular order. There you go. So Tycoona, Rutley, 1929, Devil's Finger, Cherry Bomb, Holiday. Absolutely love them all, guys. gonna put them all away real quick trying not to take up a million oh sorry thought i was missing one cimarron <laughs> sorry i actually love this one uh, i'm gonna knock the uh, camera again god damn it this is so difficult i need more dexterity for reals um yeah i love the liner lock on this one this was nailed you know, I think if they did a liner lock similar to this on the Devil's Finger, I would have loved it. Um, the action is just incredible on this thing. All right. So let's rip into it. Um, I haven't really talked too much, you know, about ergonomics. They're very comfortable. Uh, I can fit all four fingers on like this. I have a large glove size hand. Um, I can also use the flipper choil, which works fantastically. Um, it is sharp, which I demonstrated in my unboxing. When I learn how to cut, we'll be able to do this. I'm telling you. What the hell is going on? There we go. So you will see I'm coming out of the cut a little bit because I'm sliding up and that tip is coming right out. Um, that tends to happen to me with things with a lot of belly um but it's also probably just because of how i'm doing it uh, i am the worst at cutting paper i did open some packages with this today but i don't think i could have dulled the edge i may have gotten some tape on there or something still feels good though uh, but yeah the action is very good um and the uh, look of it's beautiful. Let's do an up-close look before we take it apart. Here's that smoke resin um, scale. That's what it's called. Black, I think it's called black and white smoke resin. This side shows a little more. So all of them are different. So yours may have this really cool look on the front. You know, um, I'm, I don't really care. You have the steel frame lock. Very nicely done. Here's your blade. 154. CM, cherry bomb, very nice, flat grind, comes out to a good tip. There's that edge I was talking about. Let's see, is there any damage to it? You can see the little saw tooths on it, which is pretty cool getting this close. But yeah, I don't see any issues with it. Um, I will say there's a little mark right here. Could be from me, could have been from factory, doesn't bother me in the least. Um... Again, action is really good. Centering, dead nuts. We'll see how it ends up when I take it apart. I will say the clip was a little loose. Uh, I had it today when I went to the post office and I noticed it. And I tightened it down and 
it's fine now. And then I tighten like all the screws because they seemed a little bit loose. I'm a little concerned with that taking it apart right now, but we'll see what happens. Um, one other thing is it's a little heavy. Um, I will say that I haven't really compared it to like the 1929. I should do that. So 1929. Yeah, they're about the same weight. I don't, it might even be lighter than, nah, it's probably about the same proportionally if you think about it in terms of weight. So that's good. Um, I don't plan on needing a lot of alcohol or anything. I'm trying to be careful. Best way to do this would be, I got to take this off, right? Do I? I don't want to take scales off if I don't have to. Probably have to take this guy out. That's a good sign with QSP that that came out. I've had issues with getting the clip off of my 1929. I stopped trying. Let's see if that was enough to get the scale off. Don't see why I would need to do more than that. You see that though, under there? Yep, okay. So I do need to take this off. Scale screw, let's leave that one there. Hmm, is it glued on? I don't wanna break it obviously, but it shouldn't be. Oh, it is glued on. That's weird. Okay. Well, how are you supposed to take the knife apart? The pivot's on this side. That's interesting. Okay. Not the most ingenuitive thing there. Let's see, can I get it off now? Man, this thing is like pinned in place. Now, I think most people at this point might just call it quits because I don't want to fuck it up. And I already have, basically. Oh. Shouldn't be pinned up here. It should just come right off. I got those two off, yeah. All right, so that was not cool. These tiny ass bearings. Got it, okay. Man, those are small. So that is weird. So this side, so what I guess I could have done, no, cause look, you need to take that screw out on either side. One of these screws down here needs to come out. So no matter what, you're taking that scale off. Now I wonder if this one just pops off. Now that I'm here, I might as well try it. I don't want people taking this apart and having to, like, why would they do that? Just added security, maybe? Yeah, that one's glued on, too. That's where I gotta remember here. We got this long screw in the back. And then I had this small one in the front. Yeah, I'm a little baffled by that. I might have to ask Spencer over at Finch Knife Co. why QSP did it that way because it basically makes you have to super glue it. I mean, I'm probably going to, I don't know. I'll try to put it on without glue and see how it holds, I guess. I don't want to be stupid about it. And it's still like, it's almost like it's still sealing there too. It's weird.
And here's the bearings again, guys. These are absolutely freaking tiny bearings. Cracks me up every time I see these. I mean... And you can see the amount. It looks like a ass ton of Loctite was used. Look at that. Just had to clean that out a little bit. So there's that scale without the, you know, here's the resin from the inside. It's super weird that they did it that way. I wonder what that is. Locating hole or something. Uh, very interesting. All right. I do have bearings that are tiny, but I've been trying to find a use for them. And I still have not found something small enough for them. I did a video on bearings yesterday, so they could be anywhere right now. Like, they're absolutely tiny. Let's see if I can find them. These are eighth inch pivot. So, like, these are even smaller than that. But they have a bigger pivot size I think like watch I don't even think this will fit over that pivot yeah, I don't know what knives take these but I bought them just in case like I could maybe find something all right so KPL let's get it done guys see how this goes Internal stop pin, which is awesome. Built into the blade. I gotta stop saying that. I always say internal stop pin, but what I mean is it's built into the blade. Because anything inside the scale is internal, right? As opposed to an external stop pin like on a Slim Midi or an Evo or something, right? All right. So we should just should just be able to pop her back together. Bob should be my uncle. <laughs> and we should be good to go. Honestly, I could put the pivot in now, right? Just to keep things together. I'm going to have to Loctite it. I know that already. Just to keep things together. Okay, so we need that one screw, which shit, I guess it's this guy. Just has a button head and everything. That's why there's a, okay. That's why there's that hole right there. Cause this is a button head screw, which is fine. God, it's fucking tiny though. Okay, then this should go right over top. It's still a little sticky, so we might be okay. I, you shouldn't need the resin, that's or the glue. I don't understand that. I almost want to scrape it off so it's not interfering with anything. Sorry. Interesting, though. 
I just, I don't understand why QSP didn't do it a different way. All right, cool. It might help us a little bit. So what I want is this screw, right? Yeah, I can feel the transition over here, so I don't think I'm supposed to not feel it over here. Let's put the clip on and see what happens. Okay. That's good tooling. They changed these screws, man. They made them much better. Look at that. It's taking my bit out of the driver. That's awesome. What is that? Oh, okay. Okay, I think we're okay. I don't think we have any issue. Oh. Now we're just gonna dial in the action and hopefully centering is fine. And then we'll be good. Not mean to do that. That's way too much, Kev. Jesus. Okay. All right, here we go. Barely feel any play. Oh. Interesting. It doesn't want to just drop. Action feels pretty much at maybe a little better, honestly. Centering looks pretty damn good to me. Really no play. See how it's not dropping quite? I think that's why... I'm backing off a little more. Sorry, I keep putting pressure on something. There it is. Okay. Very good. Let's try a little more. Test our luck a little. Feel the slightest bit of play, but... Oh, yeah. That is butter. I want to see how good I can get it without a ton of play. Yes, it doesn't seem like it's ever going to just guillotine, which, guys, you know, talking about a mini knife here. I think that's about right, right there. A little bit of play. I want to see if I can get it to drop without the play. No play, no drop. See that? So you can do it. You're just going to end up with a little bit of um, 
You're gonna end up with a knife that doesn't quite drop, if that makes sense. This one does, and just the tiniest bit there. So I think I'm good. Just gonna try that. Yeah, that's how I like it, I think, right there. So there you go, guys. That is the Finch Knives um, Cherry Bomb disassembly. So I will say, clip is not moving. I mean, I could maybe try to crank it a little more. I'm trying to be careful. You don't want to overdo it. Man, they really did a great job with those screws on this. And again, you're going to feel that transition, at least I can on mine. And I can feel it on both sides. Let me compare to the 1929... No, I don't feel any transition. It's hard to tell on this side because you have that. But you can feel the scale difference. You can't feel like a bump. Here you can feel where it it hits the resin, if that makes sense. It sits a little bit proud. And it does it on both sides. And I didn't take that up. I didn't take this side off. So there you go. Um so that's just how it works with these, you know, no big deal. Again, still a fantastic knife, but um, yeah, you got to make sure your clip screws are tight. Even with the inset and everything, it can wiggle if you don't tighten those all the way down. Um, be careful when you disassemble it. If you don't want to take that glue off, you just can't disassemble it, basically. Um, anything else? I think that's it, guys. I really, really like this knife. Um, we will follow up with a full review once the time comes. Thank you again to Finch. Really appreciate it. Oh, do you guys want to check out the loom? Let me crank it with my Hoku here from La Lima Metalworks. I love this flashlight, by the way, guys. Lights up. I'm not gonna get all the lights up, but I can get a good few so maybe you can see it. There you go. You can see the uh loom. I really like the loom. Some people hate them, I like them. But there you go, guys. That is your cherry bomb. Love you guys. Hope you have an absolutely fantastic day, and I will catch you later.